I can have it on file. <laughs> I had to, uh, it's a long story, but I had to, I had to re shoot the webinar <laughs> with nobody on. So that was kind of awkward, but again, uh, my name is James Sullivan and I am your financial coach, your one-on-one -on -one financial coach. So I know y'all don't want to see me, so I am going to turn off uh, the video and we're going to go ahead and get started. So the name of uh, this webinar is, we're actually on step two of my uh, series. And what we're calling this one is Budget Better, Save More, and Soar Your Credit Score with James. But there's so much information uh, in this session, we're only gonna be able to talk about, you know, building your budget, um, you know, saving more. And the next webinar, we're gonna be talking about your credit score and, and the things that you can do to increase your score. So I do see some new people uh, that signed up for, for the class, uh, for this session. So again, I just wanna introduce myself. I'm James Sullivan, um, your one-on-one -on -one financial coach. And I am from Maplesville, Alabama. I'm pretty sure no one has heard of that, but it's a small town in Alabama. And what I like to also tell people, I attended Stillman College. I'm a class of 2005, uh, go Tigers. And also I am a certified financial education instructor. That's, that's why I'm doing this course now. Uh, because if you look at the stats, there are so many people living paycheck to paycheck, uh, need credit help, need to build their savings account. So I thought what better way to give back is to uh, offer these type services. Now I'm, I'm, I'm certified through the National Financial Education Council, which uh, you can do the research on there. And what it requires is that we do about almost 40 hours of uh, training and courses then you have to take a test of course you have to pass the test to get certified and we have to do this on a yearly basis and also i read various books uh with dealing with you know budgeting saving financial education uh, and things of that na nature so uh again uh, just i wanted to please note that and all this information will be uploaded on my youtube page so at the end of this session, you have uh, information of, um, well, on that YouTube page, uh, everything that we talked about, I'm going to have links on my YouTube page for, for you to download some of the files that I have. And also just some of the information if you want to have it for later. Again, why am I doing this? Uh, like I said, it's just a way to give back. You know, I have a passion for numbers. My friends get mad at me when I talk about, man, this, this, you know, man, my budget won't allow me to do that. And like, man, get out of here. Why, why are you talking about budget? It is just something I like to do. And uh, I just like to give back and help people where I can. I think um, that's, and we have, no matter what your passion is, I think, you know, if you have the information, why not teach someone, uh, someone else? So enough about me, uh, let's go ahead and jump in because I want to be, I don't want to keep you all um, too long. Again, budget better, save more, um, soar your credit score with James. And this is the pyramid that I am going to be teaching my classes on. The first thing is the mindset, your mo motivations and uh, manifestations, how you're going to manif manifest what you believe, or what your goals and what you want to do uh, in the future. We talked about that last month, and it's, again, it's on my YouTube page. Now, today, um, we're going to be talking about budget, and we won't have a chance to get to credit, but we're going to be talking about that at the next uh, webinar. Again, budget better, saving more, and, and, and increasing your credit score. Then the third session, or the part of the series is called uh, loans and debt. You know, we talk about how to get out of debt and I say denture debt and loans. A lot of people think of when you think of loans, uh, it has a negative connotation about it. But if you have the right tools and the right knowledge, you can actually use loans um, for your benefit, to your benefit. You know, it's, people say good debt, bad debt. Uh, true enough, all that is sort of bad, but 
you know, there are certain areas of debt that where you can benefit from. So with, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is just a quick run through of what we're going to be talking about today. And some of this stuff I added because people, people were asking me about it. So I included it. Uh, the first thing is going to be uh, essentials versus spending. Can I uh, afford that? And we're going to be talking about vehicles. Uh, let's learn to budget better. Uh, some of my budget uh, budget tips that I use and some people, uh, some of the other tips that may be beneficial to you. Uh, we want to track our spending because that's, that's the most important thing. Well, one of the most important things when it comes to uh, creating your budget. Uh, and this is, is going to be interesting here. It's actually, this is the system that I use when we get to the how I budget. Uh, se session of the uh, the webinar and then of course the plug which means some of the things that uh, if you're interested in talking about um, you can have access you can just send me an email we can talk about that we can do one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, whichever is best for you but and then after that yeah you know, but you can ask your questions here uh, throughout the webinar so if you have any comments or questions uh, please feel free to uh, text uh, via the chat session of it. I think it's over here. So if not, just say something or just ask a question and I'll, uh, and I'll be sure to answer it. So the first thing, you know, some people call it uh, wants versus needs. I mean, essentials, non-essentials, but I, I just call it essentials versus spending and everybody really knows what that is but we want to talk about it very briefly and just uh, if you want to read this is good money management involves having enough money to cover all of your essentials while controlling uh, spending to buy non-essentials uh, non uh, with the extra so again everybody, everybody should know this but I am going to talk about it uh, because Believe it or not, some people may not know. So when you when you talk about essentials, uh, you know, it's something that you must have. Uh, examples could be, you know, your shelter, uh, your food. Uh, you talk about electricity, uh, you know, gas for heat, water, your toiletries, your even your clothing. Um, but you know, type of clothing, that you know, that's another story. <laughs> now, uh, the non-essentials, of course, uh, non-essentials, you know, are not needed for survival, but, you know, you would like to have it. Uh, examples, and like I was talking about clothing, you know, like your uh, raffle, uh, Gucci, raffling, whatever the, the designer clothing is these days, they, uh, you know, like cable, and cable is a big thing, really. That is a, and I'm getting off subject just a little bit, but when I, when I moved, uh, I was looking for ways to cut costs because before I moved, I did, you know, the budgeting and everything. So, okay, I need to probably cut some things. And cable was the first thing that I cut. And if you know it or not, cable can easily be over $100 a month. And you can do a lot of things with $100. Um, but I cut the cord. That was almost five years ago and I haven't really um, thought about even buying cable or satellite again. I have the internet of course and uh, I do have you know Netflix which is way cheaper than cable and also I have that that cousin or that, that auntie with the um, <laughs> with the password to the dish so I use their information but anyway I'm not I'm not saying you should do that but th this is just an example of uh, non-essentials of, of things that you can cut like video games Now, this is a question that when I go to places and I always propose this question, uh, when, you, when you talk about essentials versus spending. Now, 
if you say a computer, you know, is that an essential or is it something or uh, that you just spend the money on or is it a non-essential? You know, although, and you have to think about, although a computer, it doesn't fit like the traditional essential need, you know, but you need a, you really need a computer to accomplish some of the goals that you may have. So a computer uh, could be, you know, can turn into a need or an essential. Also, when you think about uh, if you have a, if you have your own business or if you have uh, just a, uh, I don't know, just a regular corporate job, you know, just think about this, a saw or something like a, to do work on like if I was if I'm a, a corporate guy I don't need the biggest and baddest you know saw to cut wood I may want it but it's not an actual need but if I'm in the business of carpentry or you know I'm a builder you know the bigger and better saw may be better and it may become a need because in order for me to do the best job that I have or make the most money I may I may need the better saw um to to perform the job so when we talk about essentials versus spending just think about your overall where you are in your life and just try to distinguish um if you need it or not to perform a, but if you uh need it to perform a specific job in order to do a better job or make more money then it can very well become a uh, a need or an essential need so uh, moving along, I got this uh, question uh, from one of my friends. We we're just just talking, and he's like, "James, I know you do this financial stuff. Um, what do you think about this car?" And you know, we went through the scenarios and everything. Uh, so I just want to propose this uh, this next session here. Section is, "Can I afford that?" And we're talking about vehicles now. When you go to a car lot, when the car salesperson uh, provides you with the monthly car payments uh, information, uh, what do you think uh, the payment actually covers? A lot of people think, and believe it or not, and I've, I've talked to many people when it comes to this, you know, you look at your, okay, this is my budget. Okay, I can, let's just say I can afford $350 a month for a new car. You know, but they don't think about all the other things that goes along with uh, purchasing a car. Uh, for example, if you know I'm a painter, uh, I'm an artist, so if I uh, sell prints, for example, of my of my artwork, I only charge you know fifteen dollars for the prints. You know, if you buy it. The you know if you want to present it in your home, it's really going to cost more than fifteen dollars. The print costs fifteen dollars. A car may cost a certain amount, but when you take it home, or if you want it, if you want to have that print of my artwork, you still have to buy the mat. You have to buy the frame. So those are some of the additional costs uh, when it comes to buying art. And the same thing applies to when when you want to buy a car um i always give the example of when i bought my first well not my first car but this last car that i bought you know it was i don't know i was just driving one day and i was like man what kind of car is that it was a nice car so i i immediately <laughs> went home i came home and i i saw what type of car it was and i started doing my research and you know, I looked at, I was like, man, okay. I saw, I saw how much the car costs. So, you know, I did, I did that. So then I looked at, okay, how much is the, the tag? I said, oh, okay. Um, just an estimate. Then I looked at, okay, uh, what's the maintenance cost? And that way, when I buy the car, I have an idea of what, what's included when it comes to maintenance, you know, tax. I mean, just all the, and it took me actually probably almost, almost two years to buy the actual, the actual car that I wanted. I know some may say, I'm not waiting two years to buy, <laughs> to buy the car that I want, but you know, you know, when you need a new car, uh, me, 
my lifestyle is I usually drive a car 10 to 11 years before I even, you know, think about buying an, uh, another car. So there may be something that you may want to consider, or if not, you know, you just need to budget for it. So I included a table of like a no clear plan. And then we will scroll down and we look at the uh, carefully thought out plan when it comes to buying a car. Of course, no clear plan. You see an advertisement, you decide to go to go buy a new car in a dealership. You know, you check out the car, uh, you know, on the lot, on the lot, you find the one you like, and then you just buy it. You know, you have some situations on your credit, which, you know, makes the interest rate a little higher, but you buy it anyway, <laughs> you know, which will increase your payments. Let's say, about, like the example, $150 a month. Then a month later, you realize you can't, you know, you can't afford the car that you bought because of the insurance and then when you get the tag i mean if something breaks down oil changes i mean believe it or not my car a tag almost cost <laughs> almost cost a thousand dollars i know people are not gonna <laughs> that's ridiculous but but i knew that before i bought the car is my point so as long as you know those things and you can um like I said, afford those things, then I don't see what's wrong, If especially if you're working every day. I mean, buy the things that you want, but you have to take the right, the right steps when it comes to, you know, buying a car. You know, a carefully thought out plan. Uh, it's pretty much, I actually did this almost, um, you know, you check, you know, the ratings on the car, you know, you start building uh, your credit if you have credit issues, uh, you figure out um, the registration cost per month. You just do all of that. And like I say, it took me, uh, like I said, almost two years to pull the trigger on the car that I actually wanted. So that may seem like a long time, but I think in my opinion and in my experience, that is a good practice. So it worked well for me. Um, because actually when I, when I bought my car, I had to, I had to, it was time for the, it was something that I missed, but it was time for the, the, the major maintenance on the car, which, you know, I had already saved enough money to cover that. It was like, I'm a, it was $1,200 and you know, whatever you, your calculations are when you figure out what the maintenance costs are on your, you know, on your car that you choose to buy, you know, I had that money set aside. And it wasn't, you know, I didn't have to charge it. So um, I can't stress enough how important, you know, it is when it comes to budgeting to buy a car because you can have so much unexpected uh, things that can, that will come out um, of, you know, just a simple um, air conditioning need fix. I mean, there's things of that nature. I mean, you, you'll be surprised with what, I, what I've heard. All right. Uh, if, are there any questions about um, the car buying process? If not, we're going to move. Uh, we're going to move forward. The next thing is, you know, let's learn to uh, budget better. And this is, I think, uh, what most people have been waiting for. So let's jump right in. Uh, you know, I always start each slide with a, you know, a statement. But nearly 70% of lottery winners uh, waste all of their earnings within a few years. That's, you know, these are facts now. This is not just, I'm just guessing at this. These are facts. Nearly 60% of NBA and NFL players are broke or bankrupt within five years of retirement. Now, it may be hard to believe, but these, I mean, you hear the stories every day. Even, um, I can't remember the exact number, but when you think about savings and budget, you know, uh, I think it's like over 80% of, I don't know if it's the world or Americans, but 80% of Americans don't even have uh, an emergency fund. I do understand your, 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 if you have some savings built up, some things may come up and you have to start over again. Believe me, I'm starting over right now. <laughs> and I got a lot going on, but, uh, if you know uh, what you want to do and you and you have the right mindset, you can easily build that back up. Uh, so the reason for these numbers is really plain and simple. 
Um, people are not financially literate. They don't know, they don't have goals. Um, they don't even think about saving. So that's why the mindset, I can't, you hear me say that so much. Um, it's the mindset. And once you have the mindset, everything else uh, will, will come. It will come more naturally. It won't, it won't seem like um, you're getting beat up or somebody's forcing you to do something. You know, it just come naturally. Just like when you wake up in the morning, you get used to doing something, you know, whatever your routine is, uh, you know, you just get up and do it because you're used to doing it. And I want to eventually, you know, teach people, um, you know, saving and budgeting. It's just, it's a mindset first, but then it's really a routine. Um, and that's why I talk about the auto draft lifestyle, which is later on, but a few budget tips. And then I'm going to read the statement first. You know, knowing how to manage money is one of the most important life skills that you will ever master. What is the key? You know, just like learning to drive a car, you have to learn the basic financial strategies to, uh, that build proficiency. You know, spending and saving are two of the most important lessons in good money management. I think that is a, an important paragraph there, statements. I mean, it can't get any simpler than that. So I wanted to share a couple of budget tips. The first thing that you, you know, get your budget down on paper. Uh, you know, use a budget worksheet. You know, and I and I provide uh, you know you all with with some of the the tools that I use online. And I like to use Excel. A lot of people don't like Excel, but I like Excel because it allows me to go in you know, I put in a couple of formulas. If I have some additional income, it's, it's real easy. It, it's real easy to go in and change it. And believe it or not, I, I'm a quarterly guy. Sometimes I may go in between, but I, I go in and check my budget uh, because, you know, things happen in our lives that we kind of have to, you know, we have to adjust to. So I'll go in le at least quarterly and update everything. You know, write down some uh, specific saving goals, you know, create a step by step plan to reach them. You know, everybody know all this stuff, but a lot of people don't do it. Some people need somebody just like going to the gym. Some people need someone to go uh, go to the gym with just to motivate them. And that's why, you know, I offer the one on one uh, sessions along with the with this free webinar. Of course, you know, you, uh, your plan might involve earning more money or cutting your expenses, saving more money, or a variety of other options. You know, whatever works best for you. I mean, we know this stuff, you know, set up or save, uh, save up and set aside money that is equal to six months of your bills. A lot of people say eight, you know, six to eight months, uh, but like every situation is differently. When they say it's bills, you know, your mortgage, I mean, pop, you know, light bill, water, whatever whatever that is, you just times it by six or seven or whatever. Um, that's, that's how you get that number. You know, some people say separate your savings into long-term and short-term funds. Uh, you can choose to set up two different savings accounts. Be sure to find out if there's any, are any fees because believe it or not, these big banks, nothing against big banks, but they will rip you off. Believe me, they will rip you off. <laughs> I hate to get off subject, but like if somebody writes a bad, bad check, you know, and it bounces, I mean, of course they shouldn't have wrote the check, but they're going to charge you like 30 some dollars for writing a bad check. Like I didn't have the money in the first place. Why are you charging me money? It's a rip off. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Or simply keep track of your money. You put it away for each purpose, uh, save money and you have to work your plan. I mean, that, <sighs> You know, all of this stuff is important, but, you know, some people just take it for granted and don't realize how important it is and how it's affecting them. Um, now, tracking your, your spending. This is important. And again, I'm going to share some of my uh, things that I've used. And again, I'm going to, uh, you know, share uh, this going to be links and everything in the, on the YouTube page for you to upload. So tracking your spending, the first step, um, 
the first step to creating or developing a budget is to account for your fixed expenses. That's easy, right? A lot of people don't do it. Not sure why, because they're fixed. <laughs> for example, your rent, okay, uh, and some, you know, your rent, mortgage, I don't know, whatever, whatever it may be. That's the most simplest, I think the number one thing you need to start with. Okay, your rent, $600, okay, that's a fix. Then even with me, I fix my, my power, my utilities bill to a fixed income. Oh, I mean, not fixed expense, I, I mean, and the, how, and the way that I did it was here, I'm in Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, and we have Alabama Power. You know, they have where you can go in and you can see what your average monthly usage is. Okay, usually I spend, uh, I don't know, this may wow some people, but my, my power bill is probably $120 at the, you know, a month. So, okay. And I may put a little uh, extra in there, but right now I'm just doing $65 per pay period. So to me, that's a fixed expense. I may increase it depending on if it's been hot or cold, whatever, but uh, really it's just $65 per pay period. And I get paid twice, um, a month or every two weeks or whatever, how you want to do it, by week, whatever. So that's easy to, you know, to record. I mean, think about other things like you have an annually, um, like your car registration. Okay, I told you my car is, it costs about, I don't know, $800 for the tag and everything. Okay, divide that by 12. <laughs> you know, it's, it's real easy. It, it really is. Or if it's something monthly, I mean, if it's yearly, just divide it by 12 and that can give you, and if it's a fixed expense, that can give you an, uh, an idea uh, of where your, uh, your fixed expenses are. I'm just going to jump to the sentence here. You know, each of us has a limited amount of money available to spend. Being able to manage spending is critical to achieving financial success. More importantly, when you spend wisely, you have more money available to save and invest, which, you know, you will learn that's freedom. I mean, if you save it and invest it, that's great. But, you know, we're going to talk about having money to just go shopping or blowing it, you know, whatever you want to do with it. I mean, as long as you, as you budget for the things that you want to do, it's okay to do it. If, uh, if, as as long as you're taking care of everything else that you have, that's like you said, like we talked about in the beginning, the essentials. That's the first thing you have to take care of first. And then all that other stuff will fall in place. All right. The variable expenses. These are a little, um, little harder to, to, to find, but you know, there are all types of ways uh, that you can track and find this stuff. An example, uh, I bank with Wells Fargo. Even though I feel like they, they rip me off sometimes, they do have good tools for you to track your spending. So just first thing is to be sure to check with, with your, your bank, their online tools. And then sometimes they have it where it's, categorized for you so and we'll talk about the categories later and you know i provide something that you can download also so when you when you're trying to track your variable expenses be sure to use those type tools that you have i mean with the, the this apps uh mobile apps that you have on your phone uh another good one that i use that i would recommend is it's called mint mint.com and early in my early days I, I listened to uh, which I still do Clark Howard um, if you don't know him look him up I may I include that when I upload the video to YouTube my YouTube channel also uh, he has a lot of great tools out there for you so if you have if you're having trouble with finding your variable expenses um, 
those are, I would recommend those two. You have mint.com and then check with your, uh, with your bank to see what type tools uh, that they have. And really, if you don't like the online stuff, um, you know, this is kind of old school, but whatever floats your boat, <laughs> you know, you can, you can always uh, take out some cash that you want to spend on a weekly basis or, or bi-weekly basis. And then you can just keep the receipts. Now, some people like, like my dad, he loves receipts for some reason. I mean, I'm like, if you should see his wallet, it's like so big, it's like full of receipts just falling out. <laughs> kind of like with people, you know, they keep the plastic bags when they go shopping, you know what I mean? It's packed in the clothes. I'm like, why? But anyway, again, I digress. <laughs> but I think the, more, the, the most efficient way is to download, uh, you know, the mint.com. Uh, they have a mobile app that, uh, also or to use the tools that you have with your, with your banking um, uh, company. Now, I named this how I budget. Now this is what I do, but first I'm going to talk about some of the ways that you can, that you can budget. It's whatever, you know, like I said, floats your boat, whatever is good for you. But first, you know, having real goals in mind makes the choice to save. Rather than spending, which is a lot easier, try saving money according to what you want to do with it. Divide and allocate your savings into three specific categories, which you don't have to do, do this here, but this is just a general rule. You know, you have your emergency fund, your fun fund, and long-term savings. Now, those are the things, I don't actually use those three, but when it comes to saving, but that's a good way to start. So you have your emergency fund, which is long-term uh, when it comes to like your car or whatever, your fund fund, then you have your long-term savings uh, for, you know, retirement type stuff. But your emergency fund is when your car breaks down. Um, I mean, if you, if you were into like other things, you have a side hose, you know, it's just something, things that you don't expect happen, but it, always finds a way to happen. Um, that's what an emergency fund is. Your fun fund. I mean, like I was talking about earlier, I mean, we work every day, we make money. We wanna, we wanna spend it on things that we, that we want. But as, as long as you take a care of your essentials, what we talked about earlier, it's okay to have a shopping fund or a fund that you just wanna blow. Um, I mean, it puts, I mean, as long as you budget for it, it's okay to do it and you're taking care of your essentials. And then, like I said before, uh, long-term savings, you know, retirement for whatever you may have. Again, your emergency fund is your first priority. And I think, uh, you know, Clark Howard says that, and then the um, Dave Ramsey um, says it also, which those are good people. Uh, I think if you're, if you're want to just start out just testing the water, but they're not there. It's good for a foundational, but if you want, like more investing, you know, you may want to check out someone else. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the ways that you can budget. And again, I want to make sure <laughs> that these are just some of the ways that I found. There may be more ways and just with the people that I'm talking, you know, talk to every day. Uh, so the first way and the most simplest way, I guess is called, we call it the envelope cash method. I don't personally use this method, but if it's something you would like to do, that's fine. Uh, all it is is when you get paid, you have envelope envelopes and you write what that envelope is for. And then you spend the money out of the envelope. And then once that money is gone, you're done until the next time you get paid. So for example, if you want to go, uh, say you got $200 in the envelope for groceries. So you go to the grocery store, you know, once or twice, whatever, whatever your routine is, you take that envelope and then that's what you buy your groceries with. And once it's spent, you don't use it on anything else. Like I said, that's not me, but if that's you, that's fine. Uh, I'm just giving you options of some of the things that you can do. Uh, then you have the 80-20 the budget. Uh, it says you use 20% of your income uh, for financial goals, then you spend 
80% on everything else. That's definitely not me. I need a little more structure. But, you know, if that's you, then I say roll with it. Uh, the next one is the 50, 30, 20. Now, this is the one that I use. And again, this is general. It just kind of give, gives you an idea of what, you know, what you can do. It's not exactly 50, 30, 20. You know, it can be 60, you know, uh, 20, 20, whatever it is um, that you can do. But this gives you a general idea of where your money should go off the top. So 50%, you know, essentials, like I said, maybe 60% or maybe 40%, just depending on, you know, where you are in life. You may not have a mortgage, you know, you, you may, it may, a lot of variables go into that. Then 30% spending, non-essentials, you know, if you want, uh, I don't know, if you want cable, whatever it is, then 20% saving. Can be more, can be less. Like I said, it, it just depends on what fits you better. So uh, then this next one is really, <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, I Actually, I used to do this uh, when I first started uh, being interested in, you know, budgeting and saving and trying to, and, and trying to teach people. 50, 15, 15, 10, 5, 5. Okay, I think that adds up. If not, please forgive me. 50% uh, essentials, 15% saving, 15% retirement, 10% education. What that means is if you're an investor or, or just want to learn about something, you know, because like we talked about in the previous webinar, continuous learning is one of the most important things when it comes to mindset. So when we graduated from college or school, I mean, from high school, that's, that shouldn't be the time you stop learning or wanting to learn. So education is talk about that, you know, 5% for charity, 5% uh, blow money or spend money, whatever you want to do with it. So um, if you like that, you know, that's cool, but I personally don't use that. I, I use the, um, you know, the 50, 30, 20. And I think, uh, you know, that works best for me. Okay, next. And like I told you, I used the 50, 30, 20, but let's just, let's just read this here. Uh, saving money is the cornerstone of uh, a financially secure lifestyle. You know, setting aside money each month builds a foundation for establishing future wealth while still leaving you able to enjoy the time with your friends now. You know, I hear all types of stories. Like when I, like I told you, my friends hate when I talk about money and budgeting and stuff. They're like, oh, you always want to talk about that. And uh, then like, man, what if you get hit by a truck tomorrow? You know, it's like, they like go, they make up these crazy excuses of why they shouldn't save, you know. <laughs> you know, you never know if you, when you're going to die and all this type stuff. But, you know, it's just different thinking. You know, I don't fault anybody for thinking like that. I just don't think like that. You know, I want to do what I have to do now um, cause I hope that I'm living, <laughs> you know, to 80 or 90 years or whatever it may be. Uh, but you know, you never know in life, but some people like to live for today, have fun, don't know where the next, you know, well, I don't know. It just, it's just different lifestyle. So before I get off on that, okay. Like I said, I use it to 50, 30, 20. Okay. So that means off the top. I mean, before, believe it or not, before I even think about paying my mortgage, uh, I set the 20% aside into a savings account. Um, you know, different bank account. That's the most important thing. You, you have to save first. And, you know, people talk about paying yourself first. I mean, that's true because if you, you know, go about, oh, I got to pay my mortgage, which you do, that's an essential. But if you try to save at the tail end, you'll never do it. And that's from personal experience. Um, you never do it. That just, just is plain and simple. Like I said, emergency fund, long-term fund, blow it fund. I don't blow it. I may go out here and there, but I don't like to shop. I just don't like to shop or buy stuff. I, I go on Amazon every now and then. Or, you know, like I said, de uh, debt repayment, credit card, mortgage. You know, if you're trying to accelerate, you know, the, the payoff or something. And most of my credit, if it's a credit card, it's 
is, you know, going towards an asset where it's making me money. True enough, I have that. I'm not perfect now. I have used credit card, but believe it or not, it's going to be paid off pretty quick. Um, and we'll talk about that later in the next webinar. We'll talk about your credit score. That's one way you can, uh, I say, soar your credit score, uh, having credit cards. But every, you got to have the right mindset, though. Okay, 50%, you know, pay my necessary expenses, essential, you know, if you have a rent, a mortgage, taxes, insurance, blah, blah, blah. 30% a leftover um, in my to spend as I wish, you know, eating out, I don't buy a lot of designer clothes. Uh, I did buy, buy a pair of shades though for my birthday like three years ago. That was the only pair of shades that I have. So if you see me with the same shades, that's why. <laughs> Vacations are important. Of course, uh, you want to save for that. Now, um, my spending and tracking. This is now this is what I do. The main thing what really helped me out was when we get a, a lump sum of money. Okay, let's say whatever income tax, where it's I don't know a birthday. A whole bunch of people give you some money for your birthday, whatever it may be. Uh, you sell your house. Whatever, if you can get some extra money, you know, via what I just said or saving, you know, pay your bills ahead. Like, for example, when I get paid, like I pay, I got some uh, lump sum of money and with my mortgage, uh, let's just say this is just easy numbers because I'm not a, a, a math guy. <laughs> I am, but I'm not. Say my mortgage is a thousand dollars. Okay. I go ahead and set aside. Uh, that money to pay. So when I get paid, I get paid bi-weekly. So five, only $500 is going into the, the mortgage stash instead of the, the complete thousand. You know, you pay ahead. So you're kind of like spending half of your check or whatever to pay on whatever it is. Uh, I'm to the point now where I do auto draft. Uh, people are scared of auto draft. I don't know, you know, that money may not be there, that, you know, whatever. But if you, like I said, budget and save, then the auto draft, I'm telling you, it's, I mean, I would recommend the auto draft lifestyle to anybody. It's just less stress. Um, you know, you, you know, the money's there. Like I said, I am human, so don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, there have it's been a situation where I had to stop it or, you know, I had to transfer, you know. Like what did Kevin Hart say, you know, way my checking account or way my savings account set up, you know, I have to do that stuff too. So don't feel bad. But if, as long as you have the right mindset to get it back on, you know, on track, then you're okay. But I definitely recommend the auto draft. Uh, Mint.com, that's something I talked about earlier. It helped me out with uh, categorizing my, my, where my spending is going. Like, I don't know about you, but, you know, sometimes like, man, I spent, Three hundred dollars uh, last month on just wine or just going out or whatever you know it's something crazy. So you learn. Uh -oh, I hear that someone have a question. Tay. Oh. <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to call you out like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I accidentally hit the button. <laughs> it's okay. So I use Mint, and it helped me so much with categorizing. Um, you know, like, dang, I went to the, you know, to this store, I spent this money here, you know, so I cannot recommend that. Uh, like I said, personal bank resources, just go in and look, just search around. Like I said, I, I, I bank with Wells Fargo. So I went in and I looked at all the tools that they had. They have a lot of tools and believe it or not, I called them and asked them, is there anything else that I'm missing? And they help me out. They're very helpful because they want you to have money in the bank. They don't want you to be bouncing checks and stuff like that. So they would. They are very helpful uh, in most cases. Uh, Prism mobile app. Um, I use that ever so often. But like I said, I'm on auto draft. But uh, this can, along with your calendar on your phone or whatever you, um, what helps you remind you to pay your bills or a bill's coming up. Prism is a mobile app that I use. And you have to, of course do the work in the beginning to upload your accounts, but it reminds you when your bills are coming up. Um, so that's a good tool to use. Uh, Excel tracking. I, like I told you, I do it quarterly, but sometimes I do it more often. Um, 
just if something comes up, because like I said, we're all busy and we have things going on. So we may have to tweak uh, our plan. Um, extra money. That's what I was telling you about. When you get some extra money, you have to use it wisely. You have to pay, you know, get ahead of your bill. So if you have a check coming in, it's not the complete check going towards the bill. Uh, also, what helps me save, I use um, Acorns. Acorns is an, um, is an app that I use, and pretty much it's when you, let's say if you use your debit card and you pay, let's say, a dollar and 50 cents for something, um, you know, it round up to the next dollar. So that means 50 cents, 50 cents will go into like a savings account. Um, well, it's like an investment account, uh, but you know, it's like saving without thinking about it. So like I said, you spend a dollar 50, then 50 cents goes towards, um, savings. And I'll provide a link to all this at the end or on my YouTube uh, channel. Um, and so if you have any questions, I, I like acorns, but you know, you can do auto, uh, auto uh deposit or whatever you want to do again i talked about where's fargo already so moving along and if you like I say if you have any questions just you know just blurt out something and these are some of the categories i don't use all these categories but i think it's important to you know just at least look at them because sometimes you may like what category should this go in and this really may be too uh too i don't know you may have too many categories. I don't use these uh, these many categories, but you know, I just wanted to just show show y'all kind of what I started with and what I used when I was um, going through. You know, just just starting out. You know, you have your utilities, you got your clothing, uh, transportation, and again, like I said, I know I may be going through it fast, but um, you can download these. I provide a link again on my like i said my youtube channel where you can download this stuff so if you want to um if you want to download them for yourself to take a look at them then you can do so uh, you have your medical i mean insurance it has pretty much everything on here personal stuff you know debt reduction retirement i mean education all that's in the budget savings of course your gifts like i said it's too much it's a lot so you can pick and choose which one you which one you know uh, benefits you the most. But and believe it or not, this is this is how I budget <laughs> my Excel sheet. I love Excel. I told you about that, um, and I, and I forgot to mention you know your income is the is important. That's the first thing you start with, whether it be your primary job, which is you know where you work, your main source. Um, you know, you got your second income, your third income, you know, and like I said, this is, I mean, as simple as this, uh, I started with this. I still really, I use this. <laughs> so it's very simple. Like I said, it's not rocket science. It's just that mindset and, you know, just get in the habit of doing it. You know, like I said, the first thing I do, even though it's called bills and debt, whatever, money going out, savings, as you see, is number one. Um, like I said, I can't stress how important that is. Mortgage, car payment, school loan, cell phone, power, you know, emergency, emergency fund, whatever. If, if you want to, like savings, the emergency fund can really be at the top too, but it's, I put it, I just typed in some stuff. But this gives you an idea of kind of like what I do. Uh, then you have left to budget. Yeah, I've seen negative number down here, by the way. <laughs> oh man, that hurts your heart. But like I said, this is an Excel for, so when you download it, it, it'll have the formulas in there. So you just kind of type in your numbers and then it, it, you can use it however you want to. Um, oh, I guess that's about it. Uh, this last section is, again, it's called the plug, which these are the categories that uh, if you want to, uh, if you have questions about, uh, I provide the one-on-one -on -one sessions, you know, entrepreneurship, loans and debt. Uh, the next webinar is going to be about, you know, how, things that I've done to, um, I've had a eight, I, I'm not sure what I have now, but my credit score right now is around 810. 
Um, and I, I just want to share some of the things that, that I do uh, to help to help increase that. And the number one thing is, like I said, the you talk about the utilization of a credit card. You know, if it's a thousand dollars, it don't need to be. You don't need to have eight hundred or nine hundred dollars on your credit card. And then, of course, paying your bills on time. Those are the two biggest things. But we can we're, we'll talk about that in the next uh, webinar. You know, account management, uh, risk management, and insurance, retirement planning, uh, governmental and economic influence. Believe it or not, um, that's that's I love this stuff too. People talk about me because I like public policy. If you know me. You know, I'm all, I'm involved in the local neighborhood stuff, and you know, I just enjoy listening and learning. But when you think about, you know, the tax cuts, you know, uh, how does it benefit you? How does it hurt, you know, big companies and organizations? That stuff has a lot. I mean, people actually don't even care about that stuff, and you got people who don't even know you on, in D.C. or in Montgomery or wherever the capital where you're from. They're making decisions. And it's good to know, you know, good to know about these things because you never know something may, you know, sneak up on you. You never know what may happen. So, um, so if you see any of those categories that you would like to a one-on-one, -on -one, or if you'd like to have a, a see a free webinar, then I would make, most definitely make sure I do that for everyone. And again, it'll be on my YouTube page, and I will provide, you know, links and the download locations and um you know on the youtube link so again we we only had time for the budget uh, and to save more uh and budget better but you know we're going to be talking about credit next and then step three loans and debt you know like denture debt learn to leverage your loans then of course step four is to live uh, the uh, auto draft uh, lifestyle. So if you don't have any more questions, or are there any questions before uh, we, before I uh, end the meeting? I think we did some, uh, in pretty good time, 6.53. So uh, I try to say, you know, 60 to 70 minutes. So I think we did a good job. Are there any questions for me? Or would anybody like to share anything uh, with, the, with the people who's listening? any experiences or anything? Well, having a, um, having a budget template is really good. So you can actually see where, how everything is going in and coming out. I do one every month for myself and for my business. And so it just really helps me take control of my finances. So I think the budget uh, template that you put out was good. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Oh, someone raised their hand. Uh, yes, Miss uh, Kayla Lawrence. Hey, uh, my question is, um, you talked about the three different categories of savings and um, one was retirement, emergency, and fund, fund. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk about retirement, should you have a separate retirement fund, like, a, you know, or is the one through your employer um, sufficient? Well, it, like I said, it just depends on um, each person. But me personally, uh, you know, you have to make sure you, you know, participate in your employer uh, retirement account, which is the 401k or whatever it may be. But some people have a, um, like an IRA. Um, you can start an IRA if you are, you know, if you want to read up on that information or you can just work with an investment banker. Uh, but whatever money you have available, but uh, I would say the first thing, if you have a uh, employer uh, retirement account, you definitely need to check with that first. But if, but you know, you have insurance, you have IRAs, you have, you know, uh, Roth IRAs, self-direct IRAs, that type of stuff. I would look into that also. Thank you. Any more questions? Well, 
again, I want to um, thank everyone for joining the webinar. And I really need your help with the comments uh, because I want to, of course, improve. Uh, some of the feedback that I got from the last one was I needed some examples of what not to do. So with the uh, buying the vehicle, that's what I wanted to include, uh, you know, some examples of that. So if there are no more questions, uh, again, I want to thank everybody for joining. And uh, we are, I guess, meeting adjourned. <laughs> All right. Thank you all. I'll talk to you all soon.